Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you guys do. Never goes unnoticed. We really do appreciate. So uh, keep subscribing, keep liking, keep watching, keep doing exactly what you've been doing all this time. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. Just let me know by giving me the link or the name down below and I'll be more than glad to check it out. Find us on Facebook and Instagram as Fanny and Jesse. Say hi, we'll say hi back. Check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content that we put out. So today I'm going to be reacting to Dr. Jordan Peterson, invited to be a Muslim. Uh, sounds interesting. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Your brothers and sisters in the Islam net from Norway are establishing a masjid, a dawah center. This center, this masjid, this educational institution will act like a beacon of light, calling the Muslims in Norway back to the essence of Islam. So give generously and Allah Azza wa Jal will give you even more. I said that, you know, from, from a Muslim perspective, the question that we're asked to ask is bring the evidence, yeah? If I were to bring reasonable evidence, which would satisfy some kind of probabilistic reasoning that the Prophet Muhammad, we believe is the final Prophet, right? That he was a true Prophet. Would you be willing to become a Muslim? I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't dispute a priori the idea that Muhammad was a true Prophet. Okay. But I don't understand what that means. <coughs> so like what, obviously, yeah, yeah, so this yeah. is the way I'm going to look at this psychologically again, you know, it's People are granted revelations, and it's obviously the case, let's speak empirically, mm -hmm. that the revelation of Muhammad yeah. united a fractious society. And so it was a uniting revelation. Now, how to conceptualize, but it's not a universally uniting revelation, at least not yet or yeah. not now, because we're not all united. So no, why? But, but well, why, well, maybe we didn't understand but, but, the revelation but, 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 properly. Is, That's is, one is, possibility. Is the presupposition what you're saying that unity is the ultimate objective? Well, not exactly, you know, because okay. then you have the problem of uniformity that you, you pointed out. No, no, out, even, right? even, even the idea of unity itself. I mean, is, is there Well, not... we talked about... Okay, so no, we unity is a great... This. Just to be clear, uh, yeah. I believe that unity is a great objective. Yeah. But I don't think it's the all-defining one. For example, um, if, there's a, if there is an injustice that is so great, that disunity is more appropriate, then I can imagine situations where disunity is probably better than unity. Right. I'm sure you can as well. For example, like in well, the Soviet that, Union. That would be a false unity in yeah, some yeah, sense. Yeah, exactly. Right? So right? that's what we're Well, that's about. why you wanted to address the elephant under the yeah, yeah, right but away. Exactly. We can't have a false peace. Exactly. And we but, can't incorporate things we can't yet incorporate. Yes. And no. what, what, the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because I feel like it's my duty as a Muslim, especially in the mosque, right, to, to, to tell you that... Um, as Muslims, we believe that the previous dispensations, as they were like Christianity and Judaism, they are part of our faith in a sense. Not in the sense of believing the doctrines and all of that kind of thing. Like we obviously don't believe in original sin or the, the resurrection, the crucifixion, all this kind of thing. We don't believe in any of that. Or the Trinity, of course. Um, but in the sense that we do believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in all of the Old Testament prophets, most of them, if not all of them, you know, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and so on. And we believe that each prophet was sent with two things, the message, which is to believe and worship in one God, and some kind of evidence to indicate their truthfulness. So with, for example, Moses and Jesus, we know what their miracles are, splitting the sea, and we believe that actually happened historically, right? We have no qualms with that. We don't have this kind of materialistic viewpoint on the issue. Uh, with Muhammad, وسلم, we believe that his, because he was sent to all of humanity, he had to have a, an evidence base that would satisfy not just the eyes. In other words, it wouldn't be just something that could be witnessed. It would be something that can be interrogated and scrutinized for all times and places. So it would be an auditory revelation. In this case, it's the Quran. The Quran means a recitation. Yeah? So the, the central message of the Quran is Tawheed, or the idea of worshipping one God and believing in one God, as we've mentioned. But there are some, there is an attempt in the Quran to challenge, like for example, there's something called the falsification test or the inimitability test. The Qur'an says, for example, that try and find a contradiction within the Qur'an. Had it been from other than God, la wajadu fi ikhtilaf and kathir, we have found in it many contradictions. It's the, this inimitability challenge is to produce something as sophisticated as it 
in terms of the linguistic composition as well as the structural component. Um, this is very interesting because now even Western academics like uh, Angelica Neuris and others have said that this, this challenge has not been met. It's a German uh, orientalist. She's recently said this. Um, so this is another thing. And then you have a range of prophecies, for example. Like if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 21, it's mentioned in the Bible that one of the mark, hallmarks of a true prophet is that, or a false prophet is that when they talk about the future, that it will be false. But the Quran makes very specific very specific prophecies about the future. For example, in chapter 30, verse 2 to 4, it says, غُلِبَتُ الرُّومِ فِي أَدْنَ الْأَرْضِ وَهُمْ بَعْدِ غَلَبِهِمْ سَيَغْلِبُونَ That the Romans had been defeated. At that time, there was the Sassanid Empire and the Roman Empire, and they were in war with each other. And that from three to nine years, that they would defeat the enemy, you see? It gave very specific timelines. It gave very specific... And this was a very risky type of uh, prediction. Because if you got it wrong, then it would endanger and undermine the entire prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad. But it did happen. In fact, you'll find historical things which are not even in the Quran. That Rome was defeated? That Rome, no, that the that Persians, sorry, that the Romans had been defeated by the Persians in a battle. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and so that's, it's mentioned, in, for example, the Chronicles of Theophanes, which is a primary source material outside of the Quran and Sunnah. Um, you can find it now, it's even translated into English. He, he clearly mentions that... Um, eight years after this particular prediction took place, it did ha happen like that. So we have a range of predictions, even that relate to the current day. The Prophet said that the, the barefooted Arab, they will be uh, competing for the highest building. That sexually transmitted diseases would be proliferated as a result of people having intercourse outside of marriage, and that this would be something that would be uh, diseases that had never been there in the past. Uh, the interest rate, uh, interest-based economy that we live in is mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad I said in the future interest will be everywhere whoever does not consume it he will not be able to evade its dust so this is another thing so for example um, you've got a range of prophecies where Islam will spread country by country where you know this is mentioned he's going to go uh, there's a hadith that says Zuwi al that the earth has been expanded for me. I saw its west points and east points. And my nation will reach its uh, points. What was projected and it's saying east and west. If you look at the Islamic expansion. I mean Barnaby Rogerson, yeah, who is a historian. He said that the similitude of the Muslims going eastward and westward and conquering the amount of countries that they conquered. In that early period, which you can read in the, in the book that I've given you. Is like Eskimos taking over Russia and America. That's what he said, Barnaby Rogerson. On the point of pro prophecies, even people like Edward Gibbons, they agree that the prophecies of the Quran had been met. So, so I have to ask. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't understand the question exactly. He wants I'm, to know if you will convert to Islam. No, I'm saying that. <laughs> no, that wasn't. <laughs> I mean, that's the question. Well, look, I would say yeah, to some but, degree, but, 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 it's but, not up to me. No, no, but, I, but sense, my question was, my, my, just to remind you, the question was, if I gave you evidence that would satisfy a certain level of probabilistic... No. You say you wouldn't? No, because that isn't how I evaluate the situation. How would you evaluate that? This is the crux. Well, I'm a Muslim <laughs> enough to have been invited to your mosque. No, no, you're always invited. No, even if no, you're no. <laughs> but I mean, I mean this specifically. Yeah, I mean yeah. this very specifically. You know, um, I don't think, in some sense, this is a very complicated problem. Okay. You know, when when people meet me on the street, they'll say things like, "I met a couple of Orthodox Jews in New York, yeah. and they said to me on the street that they call me Rabbi," which was. It's a hell of a thing to hear. I think watching, first of all, watching the entire thing uh, seems like the logical thing to do. And only because I think I'd find that conversation um, worth listening to or wa worth watching. Uh, concerning this, uh, the issue of bring evidence for me to bring, to, um, to believe what you're saying. Um... Have you ever brought evidence to someone and they still just wouldn't agree that what you are saying is correct? You, you know, even if today scientists prove something, someone is still going to say, nope, I'm not going with that. So, I don't know, the world will always be torn to agreeing with something 
while there's evidence and still disagreeing to something while there's still evidence but should someone it's 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 really a tough one otherwise when it comes to the quran at hand yes it's been written so yes muslims claim that no um mistakes they can bring proof if they want they can do um speak to you to prove what they're saying the miracles uh, may have come true over time and um it's something i think it's a conversation worth listening to you know someone trying to prove that this is what it is as long as it's their truth as long as it's their fact as long as it's their proof i think people should as i said i think people should actually listen and watch to watch the full conversation here what others may deem as proof another person may uh disprove whatever you're saying but um i think there's more to this video that may not have been covered in this short clip hence i remain open to more information if you watch the full in and um, it's not an in i don't think it's an interview if you watch the full conversation please feel free to comment below let me know what you thought of it and what you think of this short clip and what you think about the question at hand if i brought proof to you would you believe that this is this and that you know and let me know what you think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video